Disrupting Japan, episode, well, that's a bit tricky. Let's call this episode 47 and a half. You see, this is a special show. Oh yes, I know we have special shows every 10 episodes, and that one is still coming up. This is an especially special show. In fact, we're going to break a lot of the rules for podcasting in this episode. Let me give you the background. I'm in the middle of a personal transition right now. Don't worry, Disrupting Japan is going to continue, and I've got some ideas on making it even better. This is about me personally and professionally, and I'd like to ask your advice. I recently decided to shut down my most recent startup, Contract Beast, before it really had a chance to, well, start up. I won't go into the details here. But the core problem was that we were not really providing enough immediate value to our users for them to pay enough for the company to make a profit. One of the reasons I'm not going into detail here is that I wrote a post on Medium titled Why I Turned Down 500K, Pissed Off My Investors, and Shut Down My Startup. That post explained my decisions and everything that led up to it. The post also went viral and ended up at the top of Hacker News, the top of Medium, the top of LinkedIn Pulse, and was picked up by VentureBeat and Business Insider, and quite a few other sites. Now, because of this podcast and my presentations and other appearances, I get a steady flow of emails from listeners and people interested in doing business in Japan from all over the world. I enjoy these, and I'm happy to help when I can. None of that, however, prepared me for the recent assault on my inbox, and I'm still digging my way out from under several thousand emails and comments. And so far, it's overwhelmingly positive and encouraging. There's a link to that post on the website at disruptingjapan.com slash show047b. If you haven't read it yet, go check it out, and you'll get an idea of where all this is coming from. Go ahead. I'll wait here. All done? Good. Now that you have the background understanding of... No, no, no. I know you didn't stop the podcast. That's okay. No one else did either. You can check the article out when you get a chance. I thought about why this post resonated with so many people. There's certainly no shortage of articles on every aspect of startup life, both from the personal and professional perspectives. I think what it came down to was a willingness to be open. I mean, ridiculously open and honest about my doubts and thoughts and my decisions. Oddly, it seems just being human is enough to stand out in today's startup culture. In fact, I like to think that is a big part of the appeal of Disrupting Japan. You learn about some amazing startups and cool technology, of course. But if you're like me... It's our guests' willingness to open up and share their stories and doubts and dreams that makes Disrupting Japan worthwhile. In fact, I've been told by more than a few guests that they never would have been able to be so direct and honest speaking in Japanese. So, with a spirit of openness and honesty in mind, I'm asking you and the rest of the Disrupting Japan listeners to help me decide what I should do next. To understand why this makes sense and is not just another one of my crazy experiments, I'm going to have to break another one of the cardinal rules about podcasts. We're going to talk about demographics. I'm going to explain who you are. Okay, I mean, you know who you are. I'm going to explain to you who the rest of the Disrupting Japan audience is. Audience size varies from show to show, but not as much as you'd think. On average, we have about 2,500 listeners per show, but the gap between the most popular shows and the least popular shows is only about 25%. When people discover the podcast, they tend to go back and listen to the whole back catalog, and that's fantastic. It means that we have real value here. About 40% of our listeners are in Japan, with 60% being located elsewhere in the world, 
San Francisco accounts for about half of all our overseas listeners, which I'm sure comes as no big surprise to you. In terms of who these people actually are, well, the data gets a little fuzzier. I have to base it on those who have reached out and contacted me by email. But based on this, Disrupting Japan's listenership is primarily founders, aspiring founders, and VCs, and it's probably about 70% male. Disrupting Japan listeners are also extremely intelligent and exceptionally good-looking. Okay, those last two points are based on extrapolations from the data, but I stand by them. With access to such a creative and innovative group of people, I'd be foolish not to ask for your advice about what I should be doing next. Don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for job offers, although I guess I wouldn't rule them out either. No. I'm someone who started four companies in Japan, led successful market entry for Western companies into Japan, and has decades of experience selling technology to Japanese businesses. Taking a position running the Japanese subsidiary of a Western company or helping Japanese companies expand overseas is something I'm strongly considering. You know, though, I'm hesitant to walk away from the startup world. I don't think I'm ready to start a new company right now. But both the most difficult and most rewarding times of my life have involved getting startups off the ground. I might move over to the VC side of the table or move into education. Although education, I suspect, is a lot like podcasting. It's a labor of love. Very rewarding, but believe me, there's not much money in it. Working on open innovation helping large Japanese companies work with startups, and to leverage some of the most powerful techniques from the startup world appeals to me and is something I might well pursue. I also seem to have some small talent for telling stories about business in Japan that people find engaging. But really, I want to hear what you think. If you really want to dig into it that way, my life history is on the Disrupting Japan site and my work history is on LinkedIn. But I'm really interested in what kind of ideas 2,500 creative, startup-focused people can come up with. So if you have a crazy idea, or even a not-so-crazy idea, send me an email at tim at disruptingjapan.com or leave a comment in the comment section of the post. I look forward to hearing from you, and thank you for listening to Disrupting Japan.